Now, like I said before, when we fail to gain our access to the target using the software and the hardware used on that system, the last resort that we can target is the users that use that system. So we'll try to social engineer them so that they'll give us what we want. Now I've actually discussed this idea when we were talking about the captive portals and how to bypass them and I said the last resort is to use social engineering and get the users to literally give you the password. So this is exactly the same idea. So this is a very popular attack called an evil twin attack and in my opinion it should be left as the last resort when trying to gain access to WPA and WPA2 networks. So we're assuming that you tried everything, you tried the word list attacks and you tried to exploit the WPS feature and everything failed, then the last option is to use this method. Now the idea is very similar to the idea when we were talking about bypassing captive portals. So basically we'd want to start a fake access point with the same name as the target network. So when we are talking about captive portals, we said it's okay to call it a similar name or to call it version two. But in this case, we have to call it the same name because we're targeting a normal network, not a captive portal. And the user will only connect to a network that they know this is their network. So it has to be called the same name. The second step is gonna be disconnecting all the clients then wait for them to connect to our fake network because all of their attempts to connect to the proper network will fail because we're running our deauthentication attack. And finally, when they connect, we'll automatically display a page asking for their network key, for, w for their WPA key. Now, looking at the scenario here, we can see that the advantage is we're not gonna have to use a word list attack. There will be no guessing in this situation. So even if the password is very difficult, if, it, if it's a long password with digits and characters and special characters, we'll still be able to get it because the user will type it for us. Now the drawbacks or the disadvantages, first, the user will have to connect to an open network. So they know that their network uses WPA or WPA2, but in this scenario, once we disconnect them from their network, they'll have to connect to an open network. So this might make the user suspicious. They might know that something wrong is happening. The second problem is they have to enter the WPA key in a web page because like we see in the page that asks them for a password is a normal web page. Now this could be less of a problem if your target is logging in through their phone or through OS X because these systems will show the web page inside a window. So it's, it'll actually look as if it's being displayed by a certain program and it won't look like it's being displayed in a web page. But in Windows and Linux, the web page will be displayed inside the normal web browser. So this will be a bit suspicious. Now, when we were doing it with the captive portal, I said it's not suspicious at all because first of all, captive portals are open by default. The users are used to connect to a number of access points because they usually cover a large area. So if they see two access points, they won't get suspicious. And finally, captive portals ask for their password through a web page, through a normal login by default again. So everything that we do in the captive portal scenario is what users do in a normal proper captive portal. Whereas in here we have two problems. The first problem is the users have to connect to an open network even though they know their network is not an open network. Secondly, they'll have to enter their password in a web page. Now with that being said, the success rate of this method is actually pretty high and you'll be surprised about the number of people that will be fooled by it. But I just wanted to set your expectations so you know how is this going to work. Now executing this attack is going to be identical to the way that we executed it when we were doing it with the captive portal. So you'll have to first have a fake login page, place it in your web server, clean the IP tables and all of that, start the fake access point, start DNS mask, and you're good to go. The only difference here is with the captive portal, we cloned the login page used by the captive portal by default. 
when you're targeting a WPA or a WPA2 network, we know that these networks don't ask their users to log in, so there is nothing that we can clone. Therefore, you're gonna have to design a login page yourself or download a ready template, and there is a lot of them online, and I'll, I might share some of some links with you in the resources of this lecture. Or you can do what I'm gonna show you right now. You can just go to the login page of your router, and preferably you wanna go to a login page of a router that has the same model as the target router, and you can find that from the name of the router. Now, first of all, we wanna find out what's the IP of my router. So we're gonna do route n. And that'll show me the IP of my router. We can see it's 192.168.1.254. So if I go here and go to 192.168.1.254, you'll see I see the settings page, the login for the settings page of the router. Now this page will be perfect to be used to ask the user to enter their WPA key because we can see we have the logo for the network for the internet provider, we have two text boxes asking for a username and a password, and we have a login button, so everything is perfect. Now you can download this login page like I showed you before, modify it, so make sure that you add the form, make sure you delete the username because there is no need for a username, and instead of the login, you can modify this text and ask the user to enter their WPA key and add a submit button. Now, I've covered all of this in a full lecture before, so I'm not going to repeat it. This is just a different page, but the process is going to be identical. So basically, all the steps in here are identical to the steps that we've done before, except for generating the login page. And like I said, there is three ways for getting the login page. You can design one yourself, you can look for templates online, or you can use the router settings page and adapt it to ask the user to enter their WPA key. Everything else is going to be identical to what I covered before, and that's why in the next lecture, I'm actually going to show you how to run an evil twin attack using a different method.